Today is the day. I am leaving St. Paul, Minnesota and flying into Sydney, Australia in about eight hours. The past few days have really just consisted of packing, saying my last goodbyes to my friends, which has been sad. Yeah, today uh, I'm driving with my mum. We're going to Planet Fitness. So we're gonna get like a last quick workout in and then I'm canceling my membership. And then we're gonna go head over to Target to get some vacuum packs. Um, just to put some of my clothes in to my suitcase so that they fit more efficiently. While I've been here, I've really been trying to not complain about the bitter cold of Minnesota winter and really take it in because this isn't really something I'm going to have in Australia. It's so, so bloody cold here. I think I have a screen recording of the weather when it was minus 21 degrees Celsius here. And I was outside during that because I'm fucking stupid. I feel like the most common misconception about my life that I encounter is that I like moved here from Australia, which is not true. I was actually born here and then I moved to Italy and then I moved to Germany and then I came back here in 2016. So I've never actually lived in Australia. It's just sort of always been my home away from home, like through my extended family and just like um, going on trips there. So this is exciting for me because it's gonna be my first time ever living there myself and like experiencing what life is like there. I looked up the weather in Sydney the other day and I saw that it was gonna be 40 degrees Celsius next Thursday. Yeah, just to get some contrast, that's like a over 60 degree Celsius temperature range, which is absolutely insane. And I mean, this year really has in general been a mild winter, except for maybe the last two weeks. It's been pretty freaking warm, at least by Minnesota standards. There hasn't really been a whole lot of snow by Minnesota standards. Like last year, it was like, we got like two feet of snow, I think, like at, at one, just like in one go, and it was insane. And this year it's sort of just like this light dusting on the ground. Um, but yeah, I'm still gonna definitely intersplice some shots of um, the Mississippi River being frozen over and just like some shots of from walks I went on. Um, I think just to sort of really um, take in the contrast because I feel like it's gonna it's gonna be a crazy feeling. Like I'm not even bringing this coat to Australia because there's never really a time of year when I need a coat that that's this that's this thick, you know. Alright guys, we are on the way to the airport. It is about 4 p.m. Our flight leaves in two hours. We're fully packed, obviously, because that would be bad. But Umai has been helping me pack, which is amazing. Mor moral support, mostly, and also some technical support. Felicia, how do you feel about me leaving? <laughs> how do you feel? I feel like my heart is about to break into a million pieces, to be quite frank with you, but I'm just playing it cool. What about you? I feel the same. What about you? Oh, I feel... Oh, wait, you're going to go with me. 
so yeah, that's what but it's it still, it's <laughs> like we have been together since you were born. Yeah, yeah. I keep having flashbacks. Of well, that's the, that's everyone's <laughs> that's the thoughts. Tea. That's the tea. All right. <laughs> See you soon at the airport. Bye. Ended up saying goodbye to mom, Felicia, and my like right outside of the TSA check. And then we went through that, got on the flight to LA, it was already dark by then. And now we're in LA and I'm on the plane, ready to fly to Sydney. We just had some food in the, in the terminal, a like $17 mini pizza, because you know it's airport prices. The next time I'll get off this plane, I'll be in Australia, which is crazy to think. The flight from LA to Sydney actually ended up being, I'd say, tamer than usual. I'm used to it just going on and on and feeling like it's never going to end. And yeah, it did still feel like a 14 hour flight, but I ended up sleeping for at least a good four hours of the flight. And so, you know, that cut it down. And then I woke up to this stunning view of the sunrise. And yeah, we landed in Australia at about 10 a.m. so that was a little later than anticipated so we ended up missing our bus to Canberra so we ended up just rescheduling it to like 11 30 and then while we were waiting for the bus we had I had a flat white and I was immediately made aware of how much better Australian coffee is than American coffee and I had a meat pie which is an Aussie staple they were always just so good uh yeah we went on the bus it was like a two-hour bus ride from Sydney to Canberra the entire time I was just awestruck because because of the El Nino um climate thingy whatever it is Australia's been getting a lot of rain so it's super lush here it's not dry at all um and the green is just so, so striking, especially coming from just the, coming from the tundra, essentially. Um, and um, I just remember that whole bus ride, I was just awestruck by how beautiful it, it is here. And um, just the potency of the sun, it like, 
the sun never shines in Minnesota like it does in Australia. Even, even in the middle of summer, it, the sun just, the sun, it's like, it's, it feels like there's a different star that shines on Australia. Like it's, it's so much stronger and, and it's like, it's just this sensory overload for your eyes. At least that's what I find. I also am biased, obviously. So my grandfather ended up picking us up from the bus station in Canberra, uh, which is the capital city, if you didn't know. And that's where we are staying right now with my grandparents at their beautiful house. This house is really like my equivalent of a childhood home since I grew up moving around so much. This is really the only place in my life that I've ever had consistently. The garden here is just beautiful and especially with all the rain it's had so much time to flourish so I'm gonna definitely include a montage of the garden and just the house because I think it's worth showing off. pretty well um, and so this is our first full day in Canberra I've got mum on the phone right now say hi mum hello Xavier hi hello Xavier yeah so we are just driving to the bank right now to set up a bank account for me we set up my mobile number this morning with an eSIM it was super easy it only took like really 15 minutes or so hopefully this will go smoothly as well fingers crossed so today's friday that means we landed uh three days ago i've really just been chilling these past couple of days um mainly because my dad is pretty ill but we still got some things done i went to the bank and set up an account i've eaten a lot of really delicious food and fruits Wednesday we went to visit these family friends who own a truffle farm just about 40 minutes outside of Canberra which was really beautiful. They have a lot of animals. They have a dog called Orlando and they have um, uh, they have alpacas which I didn't get a shot of but believe me they do. They have horses that live there temporarily and they have lots of chickens. I also hung out with my cousin Madeline on Wednesday and I painted my nails all glittery and pink. I also met some of her friends that had come around to spend the night with her, which was very fun. They all drew these little cute little portraits of me on uh, this tablet. One of them, after I told him I had moved from America, drew this, um, you know, which is very, very telling about Americans, or sorry, about Australians' perspectives on America. This morning, me and my granddad uh, talked for like two hours, just about a lot of stuff like degrees and uni registration. And also he ended up teaching me basically the fundamentals of integral calculus and differential calculus, which honestly was very interesting. I feel like I honestly got a better, better education in like an hour than I did in like a year of school. Today is a really, really beautiful sunny day. It's about 25 degrees. Yeah, I just sort of took it in by going on a walk while I was on a call with my sister. Hi. Oh. Hi, baby. I 
also had my first experience driving in Australia today. And it, it is very different driving on the left-hand side of the road. And not necessarily for the reasons you'd expect. Obviously staying on the left-hand side is very weird and turning is weird and giving way is different. But you know, because I'm driving, I was driving a stick shift. So like you're using your left hand instead of your right hand. And also cause it's a Toyota, the indicators on the opposite side, which really screwed me up. I ended up turning the windscreen wipers on many, many times during the drive, but it was, it was good to do. And I, I didn't really feel scared. Yeah, I'll, I'll roll the clip of me driving in Australia for the first time. How's it feel Xavier with a completely mirror image car? Weird, weird. I Oh. I'm not used to driving on the left, so it's gonna be the first time doing that. And the stick is on the is on the opposite side, so I'm using my left hand instead of my right to operate it. Oh, and I just stole the car. It's a different feeling this car I feel like from our one. Like I don't know, it just feels different. How do I indicate? Oh the indicator's on the other side. Jesus Christ. Oh, I should have gone back into first. And I don't even have to stop anywhere, which I also hate, because like, there's all these fucking giveaways and shit. Speed limit here is 30, is it? Oh, I'm doing 40. Okay, which way am I going? To the right or to the left? I do think it's a bit of a flex on my American friends to say that I can both drive a manual car and also have driven on the left-hand side. That's not something a lot of Americans can say, so I definitely will hold that against them when I come back. On Saturday, we drove out to visit my great uncle Chris, who was recently diagnosed with a terminal brain cancer. His nursing home is pretty nice, and despite his condition, he seems to be relatively happy. After that, we met up with my cousin Gabriel and my uncle Alex, and we went to go see the National Museum of Australia, and we had some delicious Chinese seafood afterwards. And then in the evening, we went to go see a drone show. Beforehand, a huge swarm of bats flew over us, which was pretty cool to see. And then we saw the drone show afterwards, which was very spectacular. Um, it was in honor of Australia Day, and, you know, even though I'm not really one for patriotism, especially Australia Day, which many people call an invasion day. Um, it was still very cool to see. The next day I went op shopping with my cousin Mads and I got a pretty good haul. I got this purple shirt that my cousin actually altered afterwards. Um, we cut the sleeves off because we thought it would look better that way. I got a black pair of jean shorts and I got this t-shirt that I'm wearing right now. I also spent some time at their house just chilling with their dogs, Luca, who's absolutely insane, three-year-old. And then Balin, who's sort of mellowed out. She's about 12 now. We've been eating very, very well. Um, Granny's food is obviously always 10 out of 10. And my dad also made us uh, a couple seafood dinners over the past few days, which have been very delicious. After waking up to a big ass spider in the outdoor loo of my grandparents' house, we left Canberra and drove about a three hour drive to Sydney, where we'll be staying the next few days. <laughs> Yesterday I went on a campus tour of the University of Sydney where I'll be studying about two weeks and I got a tour of the facilities of where I'm going to be living and also got to ask the academics there some questions that would help me with registration which is due in about two weeks as well. It's crazy to think that this is going to be like where I'm living the next four years of my life. Yeah, I'm very, very excited. I mean, the harbour is absolutely spectacular. The day.
day after arriving in Sydney, we headed into the city centre to grab some yum cha, which was absolutely delicious. Then in the afternoon, we headed to Bondi Beach and we hit the waves, we did a little sunbathing. I didn't get burnt at all because I applied my sunscreen like a good redhead, but my dad did, which is surprising because he has a lot darker skin than I do, but he didn't put any sunscreen on, so he got pretty badly burnt. But still, it was a very, very nice day. It was beautiful, the waves were amazing. Very, very powerful, but yeah, it was a lovely time. The next day, I took our family friend's dog, Tess, on a walk around the harbour in Dremoyne. And partly because I hadn't swam in the ocean for a couple of years and partly because it was such a hot day, we ended up going to the beach again. The highlight of Sydney for me though was really the food. It was absolutely phenomenal. Then on Monday the 5th of February, we headed back to Canberra where we are now staying with my grandparents again. I got this really nice shot of a cockatoo raiding a fruit tree. And then another one of Luca being an absolute menace and uh, Balin just sort of being chased. The last time I was in Australia was in 2022. It was the middle of winter and there was torrential rain. I uh, wanted to include some of the shots from that year just because I feel like we saw uh, some things that we didn't see last time. Like we visited uh, landmarks like the Harbour Bridge, uh, the Sydney Opera House. And we also uh, went on a ferry trip to Manly Beach. I also uh, saw a lot more wildlife than I did this year, like for instance, kangaroos, um, a bush turkey. We even saw kangaroos on campus, actually, of uh, the University of Canberra, as well as a possum and many, many different kinds of birds. So today is the 10th of February. I'm still in Canberra, but I drive up to Sydney on Monday and the day after I move into college on the 13th. So I'm very, very excited, also a little nervous, but I'm happy because I finished my class registration yesterday. So I'm taking a chemistry class, a maths class, a biology class, and then a psych class. So hopefully the workload won't be incredibly overwhelming, but it is uni, so we'll see. But yeah, thank you for watching this vlog and listening to my rambling about random aspects of my life. Subscribe, hit this button right here. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.